His presence is here, church family. His presence is in this place. And I am glad about it. I am glad about it. I'm so glad to see some familiar faces. Uh, they, Sister Janae, you just made my day. She just made my day. We, 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 we had a conversation last week. I was so happy to meet her for the first time. Yeah. And she said, that's all right, Pastor. I'll be back. <laughs> and and when, 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 I, when I took a peek, I was just wondering, why is Sister Brenda so happy today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I took a peek on my right, and there she was. I'm telling you, I'm speaking from my heart. I'm just so glad to see you, sis. Keep on trusting God. That's right. Keep on trusting God. He will show himself faithful in your life. Alright? Last week, I'm going to get in the word here. Last week, before we started church, I saw Elder Rio leave really quick. And, and then only to find out that he was attending to my other brother. Uh, Brother Tommy and I stepped out and went to see Brother Tommy and prayed with him. Uh, but God put it in my heart. I asked my brother, say, my brother, I need you to come and worship with me next time. I, don't, I normally don't do that unless God tells me to do that. Uh, you know, you can't just approach people and start telling them things. And, and so I approached my brother and I said, God... I just put it in my heart to just ask you to come and worship. My brother looked me dead in the eyes and he said, I will be there next time. My God. The bishop told us that we need to rejoice with those who are rejoicing. God. My God. 
wonderful. I say he is wonderful. Can nobody do me like Jesus? Can nobody do me like the Lord? Sister Bonita, he is wonderful. He is faithful. Oh, I can stop right there and we can go home. That's enough right there. He is wonderful. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. If this kind of noise is bothering you, you're in the wrong place. The church of the living God ought to have, it ought to have a particular sound. There got to be a particular sound every time you come to church. He's an awesome God. Sister Rose, he's an awesome God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Amen, amen, amen. I'm going to get in the Word. So so on Sunday, on Sunday last week, I got a call, uh, Deacon Hall. And, 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 and it was Brother Tom. And he said, Pastor, I'm telling you, I'm going to be there next week. I said, my brother, listen, when I come back, I'm going to stop at the house and I'm going to see you before I worship. And so with me being true to my word, when I came to the sanctuary, I I left the the church. You, You know, sometimes... The church has to leave the building. Because the building is not the church. Am I right, Deacon Norris? The building is not the church. We are the church. And sometimes the church has to leave the building. And be the church. And so I went and, and I was knocking on the front door. I wasn't getting an answer. I called Sister Berlin. She had her phone on silence. Yeah. I'm going to talk to her after the benediction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I call Sister Alice. I think she had her phone on silence too. I call Sister Kasuba. I don't know where she... Yeah. She didn't answer my call. Yeah, yeah. But then Sister Alice called me back. I say, I just want to make sure I'm in the right address. I, I say, is 103 the right one? She said, yes, Pastor. I say, which door? She said, the side door. I said, that's all right. I went. Now, you know I was praying left and right. Yes, Lord, I was praying. I was praying, and I went and I knocked at the door. A brother came, and he said, how can I help you? I said, my name is Pastor Lusajo Casupa Sr., and I'm looking for Brother Tommy. He said, give me a quick second. He turned around, he said, uh, he said something, and then Brother Tommy showed up. He showed up, man, he had a smile on his face. He said, Pastor, you look mighty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, thought, I thought this brother was just buttering me up, you know. Yeah. He said, you, you look clean, man. You look sharp. I said, I'm, I'm yeah. doing the best I can. Yeah, yeah. He said, now, Pastor, I'm, I'm about to take a shower because I'm coming to church. Yeah. All right. yeah. 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 Yes, sir. I said, brother, I take you at your word. But I had to come here and keep my word. And so we shook hands. And I left there praising God. I did not doubt one second that God was going to do what God promised to do. God said, if you ask me, I'll give it to you. And so I left there. I came back. I told my brother. I said, let's keep on praying. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then lo and behold, brother Tommy came walking through the door. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Yes, he will. Oh, yes, he will. And you look mighty good, my brother. You look mighty good. Amen. Oh, I'm happy. I am happy. Well, family, I'm ready for the word. It's not going to be long. But one thing we're doing today that is so unique is we are going live all over the world. Yeah. Oh, you did not hear me. Yeah. Do you see this little instrument I'm holding right here? Yeah. Do you see those bars going back and forth? Yeah. There's a ministry called Inspiration After Dark. Yeah. And that is yeah. being led by Mr. and Mrs. Thomas. Yeah. 
Yes, Can sir. you stand up five minutes? Go ahead and stand up. Yes, sir. This couple has a ministry that they get, they take the gospel of Jesus Christ all over the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got a studio in their home. If you, I'm telling you, it's like Hollywood. It's like what Steven Spielberg got. I'm telling you, it is awesome. And, and, and so God, we'll, we'll share the testimony one day. You all can sit down. You make me nervous now. <laughs> but, but God brought them on the day that I was being installed as pastor. Elder Rio was instrumental in that. And they came, now check this out, they came to check me out. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm telling on you now. Yeah. They, they, they came to check me out to see. Yeah. And when, when they finished, they said, they told Elder Rio, he's real. Yes, sir. Yeah, that, am, am I right? Yeah. He, he said, this man is real and, and we're going to keep coming back. Yes, sir. And they have been coming Amen. back. Amen. But not only that, they brought their ministry and now, I, listen, Grand Avenue, when I say we are the greatest church on the planet, we are going all over the world. Amen. 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 The last sermon I preached, I think we had people in Spain that had downloaded the sermon I preached. Don't tell me what God cannot do. Amen. And so I, I would like to know where all of this is going to go today. I know it's going to go way more than Spain. Amen? Amen. And so I'm excited today. Amen. Thank you, Sister Holden. <laughs> amen. Amen. If you're ready for the Word and you, you have your Bibles, your Bible apps, uh, as you're standing up, somebody asked the question, what is, the, what is so amen. clever and can fit in your hand? iPhone. Aha. Uh-huh. Somebody said an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, a smartphone. All right, all right. A, a little trivia there. Uh, if you are able to stand in reference to the Word of God, I'm going to the book of Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. Yes, Bishop. <laughs> Acts chapter 9, beginning with verse 32 all the way to verse 42. I'm going to read fast if you can listen fast. Acts chapter 9, verse 32 all the way to verse 42. I'm reading from the resounding King James Version of the Bible, and this is what the Bible says. If you are there, say amen. amen. If you are not there, as Lusaji Jr. will say, wait for me. Wait. <laughs> amen. Yeah. All right. Acts chapter 9, verse 32, the Bible says, And it came to pass, as Peter passed throughout all quarters, he came down also to the saints which dwelt at Lydda, or Lydda, however you want to call it. And there he found a certain man named Aeneas, which had been kept his bed eight years. He was sick in his bed for eight years and was sick of palsy. Brother Man was paralyzed, basically. Verse 34, and Peter said unto him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ, make thee whole. Arise and make your bed. That's a good word right there. You better tell that to your children and grandchildren, your husband and your wife. Make your bed. And he arose immediately. Verse 35, and all that dwelt at Lydda and Saron saw him and turned to the Lord. Because when God does something, he always leaves a witness. Verse 36, and now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works. Somebody say good works. Good works. And arms did which she did. And it came to pass, verse 37, in those days that she was sick and died. Whom when they had washed, they laid her in the, an upper chamber. Verse 38. Now you, and for as much as Lida was near to Joppa and the disciples had heard 
that Peter was there, they sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Verse 39, then Peter arose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the windows stood, uh, so forgive me, and all the widows stood by him weeping and showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. Verse 40, but Peter put them all out and kneeled down and prayed. And turning him to the body, said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes. Just folk don't know when to get happy. I just told you that she was dead. And I'm reading now. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. Verse 41, and he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he called, when he had called the saints and widows, presented her alive. Amen. Verse 42, and it was known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Amen. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God. That shall stand forever. Oh, Heavenly Father, speak now. We are listening. Help us, oh God, not to leave this place the same way we can. Help us to hear your voice and help us to feel your touch of power. In Jesus' name, let the church say, Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Jesus, the Christ, Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. has died on Good Friday. Well, go ahead. Buried right before sunset. All right. Rested all Friday night. Uh-huh. Rested all day Saturday. Uh-huh. Rested. All night Saturday. Uh But early. Early Sunday morning. He got up. He just didn't get up. He got up. With all power. In his hand. He got up. You and I sometimes we get up. But we don't have the strength. Sometimes we get up. We have some pain. And aches. But Jesus got up with all power in his hand. I know I'm right because when you read Matthew chapter 24, I was listening last week. Oh, yes, I was. When you read Matthew chapter 24, when he was talking to his disciples, he told them, first of all, meet me in Galilee. And when they showed up there, check this out. When they showed up there, Some people doubted. Isn't that crazy? Some of the disciples doubted. But but he didn't have time for that. And so Jesus started talking to them. And he told them that all authority, all power has been given unto me. And then he commissioned them by saying, now I need for you to go and make Disciples. I'm so glad Sister Audrey Johnson, he didn't say go out and make church members. He did not say that. He did not say go out and, 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 and make a, a church, church or worshipers and all that. No, he said go and make disciples. He didn't say go and make prayer warriors. Okay, put a pin on that because somebody is scratching their head. I thought I'm supposed to be that. He didn't say that. He said, go and make, talk back to me, disciples. Because when you become a disciple, you will be a church member. 
You will be a prayer warrior. You will be a worshiper. You will be faithful. And so he said, go and make disciples. That's why our motto for this year is dedicated discipleship. Because when you are a dedicated disciple, you will do what God tells you to do. Not only Jesus is going, to be, is going to be your Savior, but He's going to be your Lord. The Lord is that person who tells you what to do. And you do it. And that's why the centurion, when, when Jesus was making his way to his house, he said, listen, listen, I'm a man under authority. Right, right. I said to this person, go, the got to go. I know that's bad grammar, but it's good theology. Uh, when I tell this person, jump, you know it. Somebody, uh, yeah, yeah, Sister Bernita, how high? Because I got authority. Jesus said, I have the power. Now I'm going to deputize you to go and make disciples. And so he told them that. That's Matthew 24. When you go to the book of Acts chapter 1, I'm going to give this to you for free because, because, because that's why you need to have an, a, 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 an educated pastor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You, you don't just talk to any, listen to anybody who can't break down the word, okay? You better listen to somebody who knows the word. I was listening to the bishop here break down some about praise. I'm digressing for the second. She told, he told you about Judah and Benjamin. I said to myself, next time I come, I have to cash up this bishop. Because the church members are looking at him like, oh, keep it. No, that's, 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 that's theology right there. I'm going to give you for free now. This is Acts chapter 1. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, Jesus is still talking to the disciples. How do I know? If you got a good Bible, it should be in red. Yes, sir. If your Bible is not in red, you better go and ask for a refund. I don't know where you got it from. But it should be in red because these words are coming from Jesus who said, "And don't, don't leave Jerusalem. I need for you to stay here for a little bit until you are baptized with the Holy Spirit. He said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Any Bible readers in here? Yes, and so when you get to Acts chapter 1, Jesus said, stay here. Don't go anywhere. Don't, don't take my name on your lips until the following happens. Would you like to know what that is? I'm so glad you asked. Jesus said, stay here until you are baptized with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Amen. I don't know why sometimes the Seventh-day Adventists get a little nervous talking about the Holy Ghost. I don't know why. You act like when you talk about, when you talk about the Holy Ghost, you're talking about something spooky, something weird. But you can't do anything without the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit is not just going to make you jump on a Saturday afternoon. He's going to make you walk straight when you get out of the church. He's not just going to make you shout on a Saturday and you shoot. But he's going to make you talk right on Sunday and Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. That's what the Holy Spirit will do to you. And so Jesus said, you shall receive power. They didn't hear me, Bishop. Because if they heard me, they would have been happy. So I'm going to give it to you. One, I'm gonna, can I give it to them one more time? Give it to All right, Bishop. Jesus said, and you shall receive power. I'm not talking about that, what a uh, start, kick, kick start, little can that you drink and you get a little. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. I ain't talking about that. I'm not talking about no Red Bull and Blue Bull and all of that. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about, I'm not even talking about Celsius. 
yeah, yeah. Somebody knows about Celsius. Uh, 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 but, but Jesus said, and you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you. And then you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and unto the ends of the world. In other words, don't go out there talking about Jesus until the Holy Ghost is in you. Did you hear me? I was listening to Deacon Hall last week in Sabbath school. Yes, I pay attention. Yeah. And Deacon Hall was talking about witnessing to, to, to other people. Yeah. When you go out, somebody say, yes, he does that. I'm glad you know that. When you go out and you witness for God, make sure you got the accompaniment of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Without the Holy Spirit, you are not, the devil will laugh at you. He will. He will laugh at you. But with the Holy Spirit, you can tell them about that man named Jesus. And so Jesus promised them, that's Acts chapter 1. I told you I'm going to give it to you for free. Now go to Acts chapter 2. When you get to Acts chapter 2, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, there were, they were all with one accord in one place. That means they put all their differences aside yeah. and they were able to get along. Amen. Right, right, right. Amen. Amen. That means you don't always have to agree with me. And I don't always have to agree with you. That does not mean I don't love you, you don't love me. But when it comes to the work of God, we need to be on one accord. Amen. If you're doing something, all I can do is just support you. We did that when the Robinsons did their thing last Sabbath. We're going to do it when the Johnsons do their thing in July. We're going to do it when Sister Ivy does the back to school thing. We're going to do it when we do the, all the mission work, whether it's feeding the hungry, clothes. We're going to do because we're going to be on one accord. And, and so they were on one accord and they were praying. And the Holy Spirit came down. And they started speaking in tongues. And somebody said, I can hear them in Swahili. I can hear them in Creole. I can hear them in Spanish. I can hear them in it. How do they do this? They must be drunk. Peter said, wait a minute. No, no, no. Time out. Time out. I know they get drunk from time to time. Okay. I know they, 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 they test a little wine time to time, from time to time. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't looking at nobody, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. Right now, man, man. The reason I say that, because Peter said it's only 9 o'clock in the morning. Uh, oh, come on now, it's yeah. in the Bible. Yeah. Sister Audrey, you are not here the last time I said it, but I, let, let me just say it one more time. Yeah. It's in the Bible unless you tore up the page. Yeah. Yeah. Peter said it's only 9 o'clock in the morning. Peter knew his people. Oh, come on. Keep it real now. I mean, you, you are not all that you ought to be, but God is working with you. And if you meet somebody who, is, who has a little alcohol smell and, and nicotine, don't give up on them because God is still working on them. He's not finished with you. And guess what? He's not finished with me. And so Peter says it's only 9 o'clock in the morning. Uh, it's kind of early for that kind of thing. Maybe if it was 9 o'clock in the evening, we'll talk about something else. He said, no, but this is what was promised by the prophet Joel. Yeah. That, that your sons and your daughters. It's, it's right in there. He said, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. And the old men shall see dreams. And so the fulfillment of the word, that's Acts chapter 2. When you get to Acts chapter... Th- wait, 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 wait. I'm so glad the Holy Spirit said, hold on, hold on, boy. Uh, uh, in Acts chapter 2, Peter preached one sermon. 3,000 men and women joined the church. Oh, my God. One sermon. 
3,000 men and women joined the church because he had the power of the Holy Spirit. And they, oh, I don't know if I gave you the title of my sermon. It's the audacity of faith. The audacity of faith. So Peter preached the sermon. Bishop Trevor, I wish I could do that. 3,000 in one day. I can hardly get three Negroes to come out just to show up at church. 3,000, Deacon. 3,000. Join the church. That's what the Holy Spirit will do for you. And that's Acts chapter 2. You go to Acts chapter 3. I'm giving to you for free now. Acts chapter 3, Peter and John are making their way to the temple. Yeah. All right, Bishop, I'll behave yeah. myself. Uh, 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 they're making their way to the temple at the hour of prayer. That's Tami. That's three o'clock in the afternoon. As they're making their way, they go, to this, they go through this gate called what? Beautiful. Help me talk, Bishop. I don't mind. They call this gate called beautiful. If I have to preach that sermon somewhere else, not right here, not right here. I will, I will, I will call it beautiful, uh, ugly religion in a beautiful place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, because they were passing the man going to church and couldn't do anything for the man. That's ugly right there. Anyway, Peter and John were going, and the man said, Can you hook a brother up? Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and Peter and John looked at him, and I think it was Peter who said, Look at us. And he looked at them expecting to receive something. Every time somebody comes in contact with you and I, they ought to expect to receive something. Thank you. And I'm not talking about dollars and cents. Because every time you say some people get all uptight. Because they think you're about to ask them for their money. God doesn't need your money. No, he doesn't. But God wants you to be Faithful in a sense that he wants you to be able to offer somebody something. And so Peter said, we don't have silver and gold, but we got something. Such as I have. And every church on the planet need to have a such as I have. Every disciple ought to have something to give. Now, now, I'm not, a, I'm not contradicting myself. Because somebody may think, I got him in the corner. No, you don't. <laughs> you say, well, you, God doesn't need your money. And then during tithe and offering, you are saying we need to return the money. Okay, let me, let me, let me clear this thing up. God wants us to be faithful. Amen. He wants us to be faithful. Amen. That does not mean he needs the money. He just wants us to be faithful. The same thing when it comes to our temple. He wants us to be faithful. The same thing when it comes to our time. He wants us to be faithful. So I'm not contradicting myself. I was just talking about one side where God says, give to me and put me to the test. And I will prove to you. So in this case, Peter and John didn't have anything. They said, but we got something. Yes. We're going to give you something that will cause you not to come back here tomorrow. Yes, sir. Because if I give you silver and gold, guess what? You're going to come back tomorrow and keep on begging. Yes, but I'm going to give you something that's going to transform your life. Yes, sir. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes, of Nazareth. Yes, Rise up and walk. Yes, yes. Oh, you missed it. Yes. Yes. In the name of Jesus, of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And the Bible said the ankles and his bones got strong. And Brother Man jumped and he started walking. And walking got so good, he started leaping. And walking. And he started praising God. Ooh, wait. Have you ever been there where God hooked you up so tight that you started leaping and, and jumping and praising God? Oh, I saw it today. I saw it when Sister Berlin got up and she had her hands up in the air. She was leaping and walking and praising God. When God hooks you up, 
You can help yourself. That's right. But praise him. That's right. Yes. That's and right. so he got, and that's Acts chapter 3. Yeah. But you know, haters will always hate. Okay. I say haters will always hate. Yeah. And so by the time you get to Acts chapter 4, there are these people called Pharisees and Sadducees. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. I ain't going to tell you where they go. They go to church. Oh, yeah. They heard about what Peter and John did. And they started hating. Yeah. Started hating on them so much that they wanted to arrest them. Actually, they arrested them. Yeah. And, and Peter had to put a defense on himself. He didn't have Johnny Cochran. But he had Jesus Christ. Oh, you missed it. One is a JC, another one is a JC. But that one JC is dead. The other JC is alive. I didn't have that in my manuscript, but God just sent that to me right now. And so Peter said, let me tell you something. Uh, We've been doing all of this in the name of Jesus. Because they asked him, by whose authority are you doing all of this? They said, I'm glad you asked. Yeah. Because of Jesus. Jesus. That's right. And the Bible said they saw all these miracles and they could not deny that it was the power That's right. of God. Amen. That's Acts Amen. chapter 4. Amen. When you get to Acts chapter 5, there's a couple by the name of Ananias and Sapphira. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope you yeah. never name your daughter Sapphira. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, your son or grandson, Ananias. But anyway, if you have, God bless you. God bless you. This couple got together yeah. and they said, uh, sis, Mrs., Mrs. Taylor. Oh, by the way, I almost forgot to introduce you. I will before I finish yeah. this. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, this couple said to themselves, we're going to sell some real estate. Uh-huh. I'm gonna, we're going to sell some real estate. And you know what? When we sell some real estate, we're going to make some good money. Yeah. And then when we get some good money, uh, we're going to take it to the church. And so they, they sold their real estate. And then, they, you know, God never told them to do it. They did it themselves. And then they, they say that. And they promised that they're going to take the money back to the temple. Because in those days, I told you, they were on one accord. Yeah. That means they cared for one another. Your issue is my issue. And my issue is your issue. My God, I, I, I am praying that that's where our church is going to be. Amen. I mean, I believe we are there and we can be more like that. And so they, they came up with a plan and they went to the temple talking about happy Sabbath, everybody. Uh-huh. The Lord is good all the time. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Brother AJ <laughs> walked in the church like that. You know, how you doing today? I am blessed, 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 and highly favored. Okay. Yeah. Oh, what you doing? Oh, I'm ready. To, I'm here. Brother Peter, I'm here to, be, to, to return what God blessed me. Yeah, yeah. And Peter asked, oh, you got everything? Is that everything that you brought? Oh, yeah, that's everything. That was the husband. Yeah. The wife was not there. Yeah. Peter said, for real? Is that all that? You... Yeah, I got everything, Bishop. I got everything. Yeah. Yeah. I put everything in that plate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Peter said, why would you lie to the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Why would you do that? He fell dead yeah. on the spot. Uh, Somebody said, what kind of a God is that? Mm. Let me tell you something. God means what he says. Yes, sir. And God had to send a clear message to the early church that some things will not be tolerated. If there's a parent in this house right now, an uncle, an aunt, people can come to your house, but there's something they cannot do in your house. Can I get a witness? There are some things you are not going to do under my roof. You can take your groan behind somewhere else and do what you think you're going to do, but you're not going to do under my house because you got a mean business. And that's the problem. I'm going to digress for 60 seconds. That's the problem in society nowadays. 
We got people who need to be, they want you to put a pacifier in their mouth. Appease them. Okay, that's too far. We got people in the church that want to be appeased left and right. Wrong is wrong and right is right. Wrong will always be wrong and right will always be right. No matter who is in the White House. I don't care if it's a Republican or a Democrat. Right will be right and wrong will be wrong. And so God said, I can't tolerate that. He dropped dead. And then here comes the wife. Happy Sabbath, everybody. The Lord is good all the time. What you got in your hands? Oh, I came here to deliver the same thing my husband did. Had no idea. Oh, my God. Don't play with God. Don't play with God. You can play with me. You can play with your wife. You can play with your husband. You can fool your co-worker. You can fool your supervisor. Don't play with God. Listen. There's, there's some things you need to be afraid of. They, listen, I, I love God, but I'm afraid of Him at the same time. What I mean by that is this is a reverential fear. That there are some things I ought to be scared. No matter how much I'm tempted, I just ought to be scared. Yes, sir. Amen. And so she walked in and she acted like she did everything. And they gave him a ch- they gave her a chance. Is that all that you brought? God will do that to you. He will give you chance after chance after chance after chance after chance after chance chance, year after year after year year, because he is long suffering. It does not mean he's overlooking evil, he is just long suffering. And she said, no, that's all I've got. And boom, she dropped dead. As a matter of fact, Peter told her, look at the footstep of those who just killed your husband. That's right. She did. And she fell dead. My Lord. That's Acts chapter 5. Chapter 6, Stephen is appointed a deacon. And then he gets killed. 7, when he's killed, he's caught in the Bible. Stephen knew the word because he preached from the Old Testament up to that point. Bishop Robinson, Stephen took a page from Jesus because he said, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. Oh my God, I wish I can have that kind of boldness. Your killers are standing right in front of you. I remember listening to Sister Horton one day. Sister Gail, uh, you know I'm saying that with love. See, uh, Sister Horton said one day, I'm so sold out. If somebody was to put a gun on my head, I will not recant Jesus. All right, all right. Stephen said, do whatever you do. Hit me with your best shot. Yeah. And they killed him. Yeah. Saul, who became Paul, was a part yes, of that. Yeah. Chapter 8, the church now is being persecuted. Now they are spreading out, preaching the word. And now we get to chapter 9. I'm going to finish here shortly. I told, I just walked you from Matthew 24, Acts chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. For free. <laughs> chapter 9, Peter is preaching the word. He get to Joppa. He healed the man who has been sick for eight years. I'm talking about the audacity of faith. For eight years, the man has been laying on his bed. Peter shows up. Nowhere, Sister Janae, do you see anybody asking Peter. But because he got so much power. He walks in the room and he says, in the name of Jesus. Ooh, Deacon Norris, I can feel the Holy Ghost sitting on me. He walks in the room and he says, in the name of Jesus. Get up. God wants all of us to have that type of power. God wants his people to be able to walk at St. Francis. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. On a Monday morning, yeah. with your scrubs on, Sister Van Lien, and you, as you walk in that place, from the front door, somebody feels the presence of God. Because you got so much Holy Ghost inside of you. Everybody you come in contact, they have to know there's something different. Listen, I don't want anyone to come in contact with me and say, that's just another pastor. No, I want somebody to know that pastor is different. Because I spend time with God. And so, Peter comes in and he said, in the name of Jesus. Now I can tell. No, no, no. That's the next one. So he, he, he heals the man. He gets up. Yeah. Paralyzed eight years. He gets up. Do. My God. Yeah. Eight years he's been laying in bed. Somebody has to feed him. Somebody has to wash him. Somebody has to give him a bed bath. Now you know bed bath. Come on, somebody. Yeah. You know they just wipe you and mmm. Yeah. But, but, but eight years. Some of you are laughing like you've been, get, you've been taking a bed bath. <laughs> but Peter said, get up. And he got up. Amen. On the other side of town, there was a lady by the name of Tabitha Dorcas. When I became a Seventh-day Adventist in 1993, there was a group in the church called Dorcas. I don't know what they did with them women, but they're gone. (laughs) It was a ministry where the women used to attend to people, making clothes, doing all kind of good things. Does that sound good, Grand Avenue? Maybe we can bring back some Dorcas in the church. Amen? And so, 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 a Dorcas was there. She had been attending to people. She had been doing all kinds of stuff. Maybe, maybe, I don't know what she called it. Maybe it was called a lifeline ministry. I don't know. I don't know. It might have been something. But she was giving a lifeline to somebody. But she fell sick and she died. I'm getting happy now. Most of the time, the next step is to call the funeral home and start making arrangements. But my sermon today is the audacity of what? Talk back to me. I've been preaching for about 40 minutes now. I'm about to close this thing. You've been listening to me, right? Okay. The audacity of what? The audacity of faith. Somebody talk back to me. What is faith? What is faith? That's right. I did that so that somebody who is watching on, on, on Facebook know that this is a smart church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody on the other side after Dorcas died, they say, here's what we're going to do. We're going to clean sister girl. We're going to wash her really good. We're going to put on some good clothing. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody said, in St. Louis, we've got this funeral home. It's called Austin Lane. Yeah. Yeah. I know there are several of them, William Harris and all of that. Yeah. we got some here. But they say, so who are you going to call? Uh, Somebody said, who are you going to call? Yeah, which funeral home? They say, wait, 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 wait. You ain't calling no funeral home. I'm talking about the audacity of faith. Yeah. I, I, I need for you to really think about this. They did not call the medical examiners. They did not call the funeral home. They washed Sister Dorcas and took her to the upper room. Yeah. Yeah. And then somebody says, send a word to Peter. <coughs> what do you want me to tell Peter? Tell Peter to come over. We need him to do something. And do you know when they did that, Brother Tommy, Peter went. He didn't know question. He didn't say, uh, no, he just got up and went. Yeah. I'm talking about the audacity of faith. Yeah. Because you know you don't just get up and leave and not knowing what you're walking into, right? So you know somewhere between the man showing up and Peter leaving, he must have asked the question. The quintessential question that the philosopher Marvin Gaye once asked. Help me, Tom. 
That's the Robinson family right there. You all need to pray for that family. Amazing Grace is not the only song you know, huh? What's going on? And somebody told him, Sister Dorcas is dead. Now, Bishop, I don't care who you are. I don't care how big your Bible is. I don't care what kind of Christian tattoo you got. I don't care what kind of bumper sticker you got in your car out there. How big your cross you wear around your neck. If somebody shows up at your house and they say, we got somebody who's dead and we need for you to come and pray. Yeah. 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 I pray. Uh, I'll come and pray. But what are you talking about pray? Pray for what? Pray that the arrangement go well. Pray that your cousins and them don't act crazy. Pray. No, pray that they will come back to life. Uh-huh. Yeah. Did you hear what the bishop said? <laughs> I love it. I love it. That, it don't that. You, listen, it must be God's way. The Lord giveth. Yeah. My sister, I'm sorry. <laughs> It must have been their time. That's what the bishop said. It must have been their time. But that's, that's not what Peter said. Peter said, I'm coming. I'm coming. Because I told you this Peter, right? This is the Peter who preached one sermon and 3,000 men joined the church. And by the time you got to Acts chapter 5, 5,000 joined the church. If you do your arithmetic, that's about 8,000 right there. So Peter knew the kind of power he had. And so Peter also had spent time with Jesus. You remember one time when Jairus came. And he said, my daughter is at the point of what? At the point of what? She wasn't dead yet. But by the time Jesus got to Jairus' house, she was dead. Have you ever been there? When you start praying to God, your situation is really bad. Yes. By the time God shows up, it's worse. Yes. Yeah. And you, you, you wonder, you say, God, you must not be, you, you must not hear my prayer. No, 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 no. Just because things got moved from bad to worse, it does not mean God is not in it. Amen. Because Jesus was making his way to Jairus' house right. when the servants came and said, Don't bother the master any longer. Your daughter is dead. Yeah, yeah. Now Jesus yeah. was dealing yes, with the woman with the issue yes, of blood. Yes, but when he heard that, he yes. turned around and he said, Don't be afraid. Only believe. Because the woman with the issue of blood already touched the hem of his God. That's what I wanted to do when I saw the Pope with this yeah. suit right here today. <laughs> I almost did, yeah. I knew that I knew power was gonna come out of that thing right there. Uh, so 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 he already did that, and somebody told Jairus that don't bother the master any longer because your daughter is dead. And when Jesus heard that, he turned around and talked to Jairus. He said, Don't be afraid, only believe. In other words, don't listen to what they say. Remember what I promised you. I promise you I'm coming to your house. I already signed the requisition. I'm coming to your house. Sometimes things will get worse before they get better. But don't give up on God. Oh, this is a word for somebody today. Don't give up on God simply because things got worse before they get better. And so Peter got up and he went. And when he got there, he found the widows. And here's the good. I love those widows. They say, we're not just asking for nothing. We know who this lady was and what she did. She was kind. She was loving. I went and I, oh my God, my God. I meant to do a part two to this. But I went and I was doing research. Dorcas was so kind. And was so good. That the... The women said, we can't let her go. And I said to myself, how many of us, if we had to die, somebody would say, Jesus, not him, not her. 
Mm. We need her back. Yeah. Now there's some people when they're dead. Aha, uh-huh, you know where I'm going. Oh yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. It, it must have been their time. God bless them. You know, you know, you have been to funerals where somebody's laying there and somebody's are telling a lie about them. You know, you know. They, they're saying all kinds of stuff. You say, mm-hmm. Okay. I guess my mama said, if you don't have anything good to say, what is that again? Oh, okay, you know the same. But Dorcas, they said, we have the evidence of how wonderful she was. And so they pleaded with Peter. They pleaded with Peter. They said, can you just pray? And the audacity of faith is that Peter took a page from Jesus. When Jesus got to Jairus' house. And so Peter asked everybody to leave the room. Let me tell you something. There comes a time in your life when you may need to ask people to leave the room. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. sir. There comes a time when you may need to tell somebody, okay, you don't believe, leave me alone. I'm not about all that negativity. Leave me alone. I'm not going to entertain that. Leave me alone. Because I believe in God. Leave me alone. As a matter of fact, if you don't, you can leave the house right about now. Oh, yes, you can. Oh, yes. You are in good company. Jesus did it and Peter did it. He said, just leave the room. And the Bible said, Peter got on his knees. I love it. Because that's how you win your battles. Yes, sir. On your knees. Yes, because yes, any man who kneels before God can stand before any man. Yes, sir. Did you hear what I said? When, when, when you kneel before God, yes, you can stand before any man or woman. Right. And so Peter got on his knees. Yes, because yes, Peter yes. recognized the source of his power. Yes. He said, before I talk to Tabitha, let me talk to the one who made Tabitha. Yes, sir. If you're driving a Mercedes yeah, yeah, and yeah. you need a Mercedes to be fixed, you go to the Mercedes dealership. Yeah, yeah, you don't take a Mercedes to a Chevrolet dealership. No, no, no. You don't take a Ford to a, a Toyota dealership. Yeah, you right. take it to the manufacturer yeah, because they yeah, know yeah. what to do with it. Yeah. And so Peter got on his knees. I don't know what he prayed, but he prayed. Yeah. I don't know what he said, but he prayed. Yes, sir. And after he finished praying, the Bible said he went over Tabitha. Oh, my God. Yes, sir. After finishing praying to Jesus, then he went to the dead body. Yeah. And he said, I already talked to your maker. Yeah. I already talked to your creator. Now let me talk to you. Yeah. Because if God can hear me, you will hear me too. Yes, sir. Oh, my God. And so he got there and he prayed and he prayed and he prayed. And when he got up, he went to Tabitha. He said, Tabitha, get up. Did you hear what I said? When he got there, I I just want to read this and I'm I'm shutting down. I'm sitting down. And and, And Peter put them all out, knelt down, prayed. And then he turned to Tabitha and he said, Tabitha, arise. The next verse. And she opened her eyes. What did you say, my sister? That's powerful. That's like when you read Daniel in the lion's den. And the king spent a whole night. No music. No Chick-fil-A. No nothing. The king didn't want to hear anything. Didn't want to eat anything. You know, when people come after you, no matter how much they pretend, they're miserable. Okay, I'll leave them alone. You don't believe that. The king was miserable. The next morning, he ran to the lion's den and he cried out, Oh, Daniel, did your God whom you serve, did he deliver you? And the Bible said, Daniel answered. Oh, my God. That was not supposed to happen. I can prove it to you. If I take you to the St. Louis Zoo and put you in the lion's den, 
and I asked the king to come the next morning. <laughs> oh yeah? Uh uh-uh, uh uh uh. You talk about Chachi's chicken. That's what you're gonna be. But the Bible said, and she opened her eyes. Maybe you miss what I said. She was dead. She wasn't taking a nap. She wasn't just laying down. She was dead. And yet, because Peter had the audacity of faith, he prayed, and he said, Tabitha, arise. And the Bible said, she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she said, up. I got a Bible reader. She said, up. Peter had the faith, but the church had the faith. The saints had the faith. They had so much faith that they said, no, we're not calling no funeral home. We're calling the disciple of Jesus to yeah. come and do something about this. Yeah. Now it may not be about the same situation. But somebody ought to be able to call on any one of us. Yeah. Yeah. And we ought to be able to give them something in the name of Jesus. Yeah. We ought to have enough faith that we can pray a headache of somebody. Yeah. Yeah. We can pray a migraine of somebody. Yeah. We can pray COVID of somebody. Do you believe me? Do you believe what I'm saying, brother? That God has power. And he wants his children to have power. And he wants his church to have power. The reason we're not doing much is because the church of the living God lacks power. Right? But we have access to power. We have access to the source of power. And we can do more. Because the God we serve is the God who said the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous availeth much. He's the God that the bishop was talking about when he was singing. When Jehoshaphat said, we don't know what to do. But our eyes are watching you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And God said, the battle is not yours. It belongs to me. Amen. Just put a praise team in front. Yeah. I put a praise on that thing. And I'm going to work it out. I'm going to work it out. I'm done. I was sharing a word on, on, on Friday morning on the power line. You better ask Sister Barbara what the power line is. Yeah. And, and, and as I was about to close... God put a song in my head. Uh, Fred Harmon, I believe that's Fred Harmon, right? Yeah. Fred Harmon had this song, Late in the Midnight Hour. God is going to turn it around. Help me sing my song. It's going to work in my favor. And around, and around, and around, and around. God's going to turn it around. And so I shared that word on the power line that morning. And I prayed and I left. I went into my office. When I went into my office at Missouri Baptist Medical Center, a fellow supervisor came in the office. She came in and without my permission, she came in and and pulled her earpiece off. And she said, I would like for you to hear this. I say, okay, what is this? And and, as I put next to my ear, the song that she put is late in the midnight hour. God's going to turn it around. He's going to work in your favor. And around, and around, and around, and around. I couldn't believe it. Neither could she. So what I did, I have this thing called a smartphone. And so I pick up my phone and I call Sister Barbara Robinson. I put on the speaker and I say, Sister Barbara, I need for you to testify. Can you tell this lady, what is it I share? Sister Barbara said, you share Fred Harmon that late in the midnight hour. God's going to turn it around. It's going to work in your favor. And Sister Barbara said, you know what, Pastor? I'm going to listen to that song one more time. 
We serve a God who is amazing. Yes, yes, yes. Isn't he amazing, Deacon? Yes, he is. He's amazing. Yes, he, is. he will affirm and he will confirm. But he wants us to have faith. Yes, yes. He wants us to believe that we can do what he has commissioned us to do. Yes. Jesus said, greater yes. things than these you will be able to do. Yes. Yes. And so we need to walk out with power. We need to serve with power. We need to pray with power. We need to worship with power. We need to adore him with power. Holy Spirit power. I just want to open the door of the church. I want to invite somebody under the sound of my voice. Online or in person, who is willing to say on this day, I want to make Jesus my Lord and my Savior. If you want, you may be watching us online, you may be in this sanctuary right now, and you say, Pastor, I've been a Christian. Yeah. But I want to surrender my life to God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been a member, perhaps. But I'm seeing God in a new way right now. Yes, Lord. And I want to be all in and sold out. Yeah. I'm not going to wait. And, and listen, listen to me. I, I was talking to somebody this week. I'm not going to wait until everything is right in my life. That's the devil's lie right there. Telling you, oh, wait until you fix this and you fix that. You can't fix yourself. We serve a God who gets down and dirty. So that he can clean us up. And so don't wait until everything is all right. Let God make things all right in your life. And so I'm making an appeal. I'm making an appeal. If you want, you say, Pastor... I want to be a member of this church in a new way. I want to be re-baptized. I want to go into this baptismal pool one of these days soon and be baptized or re-baptized and join this church and do the work that God has called us to do. If that's you, if that's you, don't worry about anybody who's looking or listening. Just raise your hand and say, that's me. If you want to just be baptized or rebaptized, just, just, just raise your hand. Don't worry about anybody else. If you are watching us online, there's a way you can send a message. We'll follow through. But if that's you, and, and, and for those who know how to pray, please close your eyes and pray. Amen. Amen. And then it could be that you just say, I just want to be a member. I want to join by the confession of faith. The doors of the church are open as well. Whenever God just moves in your heart and you say, Pastor, I want to be a part of what God is doing down here. I'm inviting you to do it. I'm inviting you. We got two of our members who are doing that right there. God bless you. Give God the praise, family. Amen. Amen. If there's anyone else, if there's anyone else who said, I want to join, I want to be a part of the Grand Avenue Seventh-day Adventist Church. If that's you, just raise your hand. God sees it. God knows your heart. God knows your heart. I'm just going to ask for my family to come up, if you don't mind. I'm just going to ask the Thomases out here. And they want to be a part of the Grand Avenue Seventh-day Adventist Church. Come on, somebody. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. 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 I'm just going to give them just one minute to share their quick testimony. But I tell you, I love this couple. I love this couple. And we've been taught, we've been praying.
praying together. Amen. They are all in and sold out for Jesus. All right. Amen. 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 Well, we want to thank the Lord for <clears throat> continuing using us yeah. as vessels. Yeah. We've been through a lot <clears throat> with cancer. That's why we understand. Yeah. Yeah. God is still woman. Yeah. And he wants us all to come together as one yeah. in the faith. Yeah. So that we can continue to be witnesses. There's so many people dying without Christ. Yes. Amen. Amen. And we have been doing God's work, and the devil has been really attacking us. Yeah. But God. Yes. Wow. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 Through this ministry that we have been doing for the last 10 years. Oh, 10 years. Wow. So we thank God for what He continued to do. May He continue to do more through us and all of us as brothers and sisters. Right. Yes. Amen. Come on, somebody. She said, Do you God give you a good woman? You see why I tell you. Because I, I, I take all my, my speaking notes from this brother right here. He said, when God gives you a good woman, what more can I say? Amen, amen. God, to God be the glory. He is adding to the body of Christ. So Grand Avenue, I'm asking you to love on the Thomas. I'm asking you to love on the Thomas. Amen. Amen. They drive all the way from Cavendish to make their way here. Now, if you live in town, you ought to be able to make it to church. Amen. 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 God bless you, family. Amen. 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 I've been in this church several times, but this is the only man that I feel that God has sent you. Now you can support him or lose him. God said, go into this city and preach the gospel. Let them hear. Let them what he hear. Here and those that don't leave the city and shake the dust of their feet. This man has came to get you ready. Yes, man. Let him get you ready. That's all I got to say. If you can stay here, we're going to have a word of prayer as we close. I need the elders to come. I need the elders to come. Deacon Hall, if you can come this way, I need you to come. If you can come this way, I'd like to pray. I'd like for us to, yeah. of course, there you go. Before you call, you can watch. Everyone, if you can come this way, we're going to pray over the Thomases. Yeah. There's much more that God is going to do in them and through them. Amen. Amen. So if you can just turn around and put your hands, and church member, I just want you to stretch your hands towards the Thomas and pronounce a blessing towards them. Amen. Amen. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you have done this afternoon. You have made us better as a church because of Mr. and Mrs. Thomas who have joined our church on today. God, we pray that your blessings will be upon them. 
We pray, O oh God, that you bless them in their going in and in their going out. God, we pray that you will put a hedge of protection around them. God, we pray that you will surround them with favor as a shield. God, we pray that you will bring people in their lives who are predisposed to bless them and remove people out of their lives who don't mean them any good. God, we pray that you will heal them from any illness that is bothering them right now. I'm lifting up Sister Gina right now, oh God, that the blood of Jesus will cleanse her from everything that is not right in her. I'm lifting up Brother Robert right now, that the blood of Jesus will cleanse him from everything, oh God. And God, we touch and agree that you will bless them and you will make them and use them as a display of what a blessing look like. Oh God, help us as a church to not be a stumbling block, but to be a blessing and to love on them, oh God. We praise you in advance for what you're going to do. This is our humble prayer, oh God, in Jesus' name. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. Give God the praise. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.